tonight in a theme that rhymes. God, work with my mind. Get me prepared for what you have for me. There are many of you, you don't have things tonight that you should have. Therefore, we should already be possessing certain things tonight, but you don't have it. You don't have it. And the reason you don't have it is your mind. Now, see, we laughing, but you know what that tells me? That a person can say the right thing to me and hate me. Can compliment me, but can't stand me. Tell me they praying for me, but wish I fall. See, God searching the heart. God will not only reveal your heart, but God will reveal somebody's heart to you. Woo! God will tell you, that's not the church that I have for you. Yeah, Jeremiah 7. We're going to roll for a minute and then we're done. Jeremiah 7. Because you have to deal with it. Jeremiah 7 in verse 23. Notice what the Bible said. Jeremiah 7, 23. 23. But this is what I commanded them. Saying, obey my voice. And I will be your God. See, the most high is not everybody's God. We all God's children, not according to this. All souls belong to God. But to be a child of God, you have to obey God's voice. You have to, or the most high will not claim you. This reason, even at the end of time, God is going to be able to say to people who did not obey his voice, no matter what good works they did, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Watch this. I never knew you. He said, obey my voice. I will be your God. You shall be my people. Everybody not God people. Right? I'm not giving an amen. Everybody not God's people. He has a special people. For who going to obey him. Folk who going to listen to his voice, watch this, more so than they listen to their own voice. And he said, walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Yet, watch this, you did not obey or incline their ear, but follow the counsels and the dictates of their evil hearts. Watch this, church, and went backward and not forward. Tell your neighbor, don't trust your own mind. Because it will cause you to go backwards. Well, Pastor, I'm doing this because this is going to help me. No, that's going to hurt you. Come on, that's going to hurt you. Jeremiah 16, trying to drink away all your problems, that's going to hurt you. That's going to hurt you. Getting hooked on them pills, that's going to hurt you. That's not going to help you. Come on. Smoking all that weed, that's not helping you. That's going to hurt you. Matter of fact, that is hurting you. But isn't it amazing how this old evil generation, they, they want to just attach certain things to the black community. Just want to make all our young men just weed heads. Come on, just, just want to make it cool to smoke out. I mean, he ain't got a job. He ain't just staying smoked out in grandmama's basement with the retro Jordans on. Nice gold chain. He broke. But they tell him. See, every y'all really don't. I know some of you say, I don't know why pastors don't deal with black history. Man. See, you probably wouldn't like how I would deal with it. <laughs> you probably wouldn't. You probably leave here show sure enough, man. I don't know why he talked like that black as he is. <laughs> I'm dealing with what's real. When you look in certain parts of the black community, we are messed up right now. Hip-hop music has done us a great disservice L look at the latest actor 
This guy, I can't even think of his name, Jonathan somebody. Major. Jonathan who? Major. Major. That may be him. I don't know his name. But they put him on the cover of Ebony. Oh, man, did you see this trash? Did you see this jacket this dude had on? What man going to dress like that? So, so what are you saying to the black man that this is it? And notice Ebony. I thought y'all were a black folk. Why y'all use him in Black History Month? What is the message to us doing black history? See, one reason I won't just accept it in totality is because I don't want one month. I ain't just black in February. I'm black in March. I'm black in April. I'm black in June. So I want all 12 months. I want to celebrate my culture all 12 months. And I advise everybody to do the same. Am I right? See, I told you wouldn't like it if I get talking about it, so let me stop. Now, some of you are going to live, okay, I see why you don't talk about it then. All right. Yeah, because I see what's going on in the community, and it ain't right. I tried to tell y'all about Black Lives Matter in the beginning. Nobody wanted to hear me. So I'm in the church, left the church, got mad because I spoke against Black, Black Lives Matter. And I told y'all Black Lives Matter was a fraud from the beginning. How can you be Black Lives Matter and Black Lives don't matter to you? Black lives only mattered when they thought they could get money when a white cop kill a black man. But if black men killing black men, ain't no money in that. If black lives matter, get up in Memphis and go against these gangs. Get out in California. Get up here in Atlanta. I know I'm talking right. They have Black Lives Matter written on the court everywhere. Come on, somebody. Jeremiah 16, 12. And you have done worse than your fathers. For the whole, each one follows the dictates of his own evil heart. So that no one listens to me. Isn't that bad? Here God is having to tell people who's supposed to be his people. Y'all so busy, and this is the church. Y'all so busy being a fool, following your own mind, trusting in your own mind that you won't listen to me. Now, tell you, you ain't got to listen to everybody. But when you decide not to listen to God, the Most High. Shout to Him, you in big trouble. Shout to two more folks, you in big trouble. You in big trouble. You in big. Come on, come on. I need you to preach that to somebody. Tell them if you don't listen to God, you in big trouble. You didn't preach it. Tell three more folks, you in big trouble. Big trouble. Big trouble. You in big trouble. Woo! You ain't listening to God. You in big Am I right? That's what he says in Jeremiah 17 9. What he says? The heart is deceitful above what? Desperately wicked. Who can know it? But I, the Lord, search the heart. And I test the mind. Look at it. Even to give every man according to his ways according to the fruit of his doing but see my ways is based upon my mind right Proverbs 3 5 said acknowledge the Lord in all of your what ways and he'll direct your what but lean not to your own what understanding see when I lean to my own understanding that's me being a fool trusting my own mind Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way that seems right to a man. But the end is the way of what? Death or destruction. 
We call it highway seems right. Marriage on the verge of ruin, but you won't listen to God. Finances all jacked up, but you won't listen to God. I'm a witness. Nobody will get you out of financial despair like God. Like God. I said like God. Not nobody. When you get in financial trouble, the one person you need to listen to is not Ellen Musk or Elon Musk. It's not Jeff Bezos. I know I'm talking right. It's not nobody teaching you how to invest in the stock market. No. Teach what I know. When you in financial trouble and everything is caving in, the one person you want to make sure you listen to is God. God tell me how to get out of this. God tell me how to pay off these cards. God show me how to prosper in this life. Because in Jeremiah 17, when he talks about how the heart is evil, if you go back in verse 5, he talks about what's going to happen to the person who trusts in their own mind. Your mind also being self. He talks about curse is the man. Come on. See, there's no way you can stop from being under a curse if you trust your own mind. Curse is going to be the life you live. Listen to me. Because you trust your own mind, you think you can work your way out of a curse. You think if you go from $10 an hour to $20 an hour that that's going to solve your problem. No, you got a bigger problem. And that is that you trust your own mind. And that's the reason the curse is on some of us. And no matter what you do to get off and under that curse, it doesn't work. Because your problem is that you trust too much in yourself. I'm closing. But there's a remedy for that. The remedy is to move on up past verse 5 and 6 and get to the point where he talk about blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Well, for he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water which bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf will not wither nor dry up. Come on somebody. Tell your neighbor when you trust God and not yourself. He'll make sure you always prosper and have good success. Come on, somebody. I said God will be the one backing you up when you step out. If you step in because he told you to step, then God going to say when you step, I don't care what happens after you step, know that I got your back, I got your front, I got you on the right and the left. In other words, I'm covering you because you didn't move out of your own mind. You moved because I told you to move. Now some of you are going to miss God because you're going to finally decide to move, but you're going to move out of your own mind. And whatever you move to do, it's going to be a headache to you. Because it's going to be you. But if you'll move when God say move, no matter what happens in reference to the move, he has you. He has you. Do you hear me? But I say I'm going to let God use me as long as he want to use me. Because we need it. And I'm finding out the more I talk to people that the messages God been giving me. They have been on point. He know our heart. Right now God know our heart. And even when something get in your heart or mind that ain't right, you don't give up. You don't quit. You let God help you with what's in your heart that's not right. Lord, I'm feeling like giving up. Help me. Because that's my choice. I want to quit. 
But have mercy and help me, Lord. Don't you know God will help you? Because he searched the heart. He'll help you with your heart. Woo! Some of you still married because God helped you with your heart. Psalm 1. I'm going to tie this in and be done. Some of y'all ain't laughing and you ain't smiling. You're sitting there. Some of us in there looking like, Pastor B having some real stuff going on up there. <laughs> then come in here and preach to us like he on fire. I do be on fire. It be that type stuff setting me on fire. I know, God, I can't get too far away from you. Because you will help me. Listen, even when my heart ain't right, you will show me the way. Y'all, sometimes we're going to mess things up. I said, sometimes we'll mess things up. Listen, sometimes because we trust in our own heart, we will mess things up. And ask your neighbor, have you ever messed something up? Your ideal messed it up. But you can't come up with the ideal to fix it. Anybody ever mess something up? You had the right idea to mess it up. But to get it fixed, you don't have a clue. See, this is the reason the Holy Ghost want me to close like this. At some point in life, every one of us, because we trust in our own heart too much, you're going to mess something up. But it's in that moment where you know, Lord, I have messed this up. But you search the heart. You know my heart. I got to elevate my mind. Listen to you so that you can show me. So you can show us how to repair this. Amen.